Hi, I'm Lisa Bardot, and welcome to Procreate for Beginners, the ultimate introduction to Procreate. I'll teach you Procreate's most essential and useful tools, plus plenty of tips and tricks that will get you drawing as quickly as possible. Follow along and draw with me as I teach you about brushes, layers, masks, working with color, animation, and so much more. Let's go. Procreate is a powerful and intuitive painting and drawing app for iOS. You can use it to make art anytime, anywhere with the world of art tools and mediums at your fingertips. You can use Procreate to make illustrations, paintings, graphics, patterns, animations, as an art journal, a sketchbook, and so much more. In this video, I'm using Procreate version 5X, a 12.9 inch iPad Pro, and a second generation Apple Pencil. If you want to learn more about what iPad and accessories are best for using Procreate, check out my recommended hardware video. Let's get started. When you open up Procreate, the first thing you'll see is the gallery view. Here you can browse, organize, and open all of your artwork, as well as start new pieces. Tap the plus sign in the upper right to create a new file. There are several canvas options here, but for now choose screen size. This will open up the canvas interface. Let's begin by exploring the tools, which are these icons over on the right. We'll start by exploring the brushes. Tap the brush icon to open the brushes panel. Procreate comes with a variety of pre-installed brushes designed to emulate real life art mediums like pencils, paint, markers, as well as other unique effects. Brushes are organized into sets based on effect or medium. But the real magic of Procreate is that you can install or even create your own custom brushes. Tap a brush to enter the brush studio. Each brush in Procreate is created by combining shapes with textures and manipulating over a hundred settings found here. We're not going to get to know these settings right now, but just know that they exist. Tap done to exit the brush studio. Let's experiment with a single brush. Find the inking set and select the brush called Mercury. Use it to make some marks on your canvas. Experiment with light and heavy pressure. Many brushes are pressure sensitive and behave differently depending on how hard you press with your pencil. Brushes may also be tilt sensitive. Tilt your pencil and see how the marks of this brush become lighter. Let's take a look at these sliders on the side. The top one controls brush size. The bottom one controls brush opacity, or how see-through the brush marks are. Move the sliders around and see what happens when you make new brush marks. Let's skip over to the third icon in the tools, which is the eraser. Use it to erase some of what you've drawn. You can actually choose any of the brushes to use as the eraser tool. Let me show you. Go back to your brush tool and draw a shape. Now tap and hold the eraser tool. This automatically selects whatever brush you are using to become the eraser. You can match your erase marks to your brush marks for a seamless look. The next tool is the smudge tool. This tool can produce different kinds of smudging and smearing effects depending on which brush you use with it. You can choose any of the brushes to smudge. Try a few different brushes to see the different effects. Okay, we're starting to run out of room, so it's a good time to introduce gestures. Learning Procreate's gestures is essential, as many tools and features can only be used with gestures, while other gestures can significantly speed up your drawing workflow. Use two fingers to pinch in and out to zoom, and twist to rotate the canvas. Do a quick pinch to have the canvas go back to filling the screen. If you make a mark you want to undo, simply tap with two fingers anywhere on the canvas. Tap with two fingers and hold to quickly undo multiple. Tap with three fingers to redo. Tap and hold with three fingers to redo multiple. Swipe with three fingers in a Z motion to scrub off the screen and clear all. We'll cover a few more gestures as we progress through this lesson, but be sure to check out my 30 Procreate Gestures tutorial to become a master at gestures. Now that you have a clear canvas, take some time to do a little brush play. The thing I suggest for any new Procreate user is to create a brush stroke study. 
This will get you familiar with the capabilities and effects that the different brushes can produce. Go through your brushes panel and test out the different brushes. Experiment with pressure, tilt, brush size, and opacity. Also practice using the gestures for undo and redo. Pause the video now and play with the brushes for a few minutes. When you're done with your brush play, tap the word gallery in the upper left. This will take you back to the gallery view. Let's create another file before we learn about more Procreate goodness. This time we're going to create our own custom canvas size. To do this, tap the rectangle in the corner of the menu. The canvas size I prefer to use on a regular basis is 3800 by 2800 pixels. It's a high enough resolution for printing my art, but it's not so big that I'll run out of layers. More on that later. You can type in the dimensions under width and height. If you're setting your canvas up in pixels, you do not need to worry about what the DPI is set to. Let's give this canvas template a name. I'm going to call it medium res horizontal. Here are some other canvas sizes I often use. Tap create and you'll be back in the canvas interface. Next, let's learn how color works in Procreate and the many ways to incorporate color into your artwork. This circle in the upper right will open the color picker. You'll use this panel to choose colors. You can pick colors in a few different ways, but the one I like best is the disc, the first option at the bottom. The outer ring lets you choose your hue, such as red, yellow, green, blue, and so on. This is the inner disc, which lets you select the value of that hue. Moving up and down on the disc controls the lightness or darkness of the color, and left to right will control the saturation of the color. Let's lay down a few colors on our canvas. First, let's choose a different brush. Tap the brush icon, then find the inking set, and choose the brush called Syrup. Head back over to the color picker. Use it to choose a grassy green and draw a splotch of color on the canvas. Repeat those steps to find a sky blue, a nice bright pink, and a sunny yellow. Let's also make some variations of those colors. There are a few ways to recall a color, but the one I use most is the eyedropper tool. Take a finger and hold it on the canvas to invoke the eyedropper. It lets you easily select a color that's already on the canvas. Choose the green. Then go to the color picker and find a deep forest green. Paint a splotch below the grass green. If you're doing a lot of color picking, you can actually detach this panel and leave it open on your canvas. Tap and hold this gray handle and drag the panel anywhere you want. This is called the color companion. Let's also pick a deeper, darker blue and a lighter pink. For the yellow, just adding black will make this color look a bit muddy, so let's add some red to this color as well. That color looks like this. Tap this little X on the color panel to return it to its original position in the upper right. We've got a nice little collection of colors going. Let's save these colors for future use by making a color palette. Open the color picker and tap palettes in the lower right of that panel. Tap the plus sign in the upper right, then tap create new palette. A new space will appear that says untitled. Tap untitled and we can rename this palette. Let's call it fun colors. You'll also see this blue button that says default. This means that the palette will appear at the bottom when we return to the color disc. Select this green using the eyedropper. Then tap here in the palette area. A swatch will appear. I drop the darker green and add another swatch to the palette. You can rearrange swatches by tapping, holding, and dragging to another spot. To delete a swatch, tap hold and release, then tap delete. But let's add that color back. Save the rest of the colors by using the eyedropper tool, then adding them to the palette. Congrats, you made your first Procreate color palette. There are also a couple fun ways to make automatic color palettes. Choose New from Photos to make a palette based on an image saved in your camera roll. It's also possible to share your color palettes and import downloaded color palettes. 
you can find this palette I'm importing on my website. I have a whole library of free Procreate color palettes, as well as a tutorial about how to use color palettes in your artwork. Let's be sure to set our fun colors palette as default. Next, I'll show you a quick way to color in a shape. Let's clear this layer using the three finger scrubbing motion. Select the lighter green color and draw a leaf shape. Be sure this shape is completely closed. We're going to use a feature called Color Drop. Drag the color circle into the center of the leaf and release, and that shape will be filled with color. Next, let's choose the darker pink from your palette and draw a simple flower shape and then fill it in using Color Drop. You can also change the color of a shape by dropping a different color on it. Choose a light pink from your palette and drop it on the flower to change the color. You can even color drop using a palette swatch. Let's make this flower yellow. Tap, hold, and drag the swatch to the shape. This is called swatch drop. One more helpful color picking tip is if you tap and hold this color circle, it will recall the previous color you were using. It's a handy way to toggle between two colors. Let's talk about layers. Layers are, in my opinion, the most powerful tool in a digital artist toolbox. You can use the power of layers to maintain control over your artwork and manipulate areas of your canvas independently by utilizing a non-destructive workflow. If all that sounds confusing, just stick with me. Layers allow you to separate elements of your artwork, which has a ton of advantages. You can change the way layers interact with each other, use them to block or mask areas of your piece, change the opacity, and so much more. Let's dig into layers. This icon with the two squares will open the layers panel. Here you'll see one layer, which is where we've been drawing everything so far. The layer has a small box that contains a preview of what's on that layer. Down here is the background color, which is white by default. You can tap to select a flat color for your background. For now, let's leave it white. You can double tap near different points on this disc to snap to pure color values. I use this all the time to pick pure white, pure black, or the most saturated version of a color. Double tap close to white on the color disc to select pure white. Tap, done. You can also turn off the background by unticking this checkbox. This will give your piece a transparent background. Let's leave it on. Okay, back to the layers. Tap this plus icon to create a new layer. Layer two appears and it becomes the active layer. As you can see, it's highlighted in blue. This means anything you draw will be drawn on this highlighted layer. Select the light pink from your palette and draw another flower shape with longer petals over the leaf and flower. If we go back to the layers panel, we'll see the pink flower in the layer two. These checkboxes turn on and off the visibility of a layer. Tap and hold the eraser icon to choose the syrup brush as your eraser. Erase the tops of the petals to form points. Because I've drawn this pink flower on a new layer, I can erase parts of it without affecting the leaf and yellow flower. That's the beauty of layers. You can alter parts of your artwork without messing with other parts. I can also change the way layers interact with one another. On layer two, tap this little N this is the opacity slider, which makes the contents of the layer see-through. Set this layer back to 100% opacity. These options below are blend modes. Blend modes dictate how two layers blend or interact with each other. It can get a little complicated, but my advice is to scroll through the different blend modes to see what each one does. I think the multiply blend mode creates a pretty fun effect here, but for now, let's just set it back to normal. Tapping on a layer will invoke a menu with several options. You can rename the layer, select its contents, fill the layer with color, and more. Masks are another powerful tool that allow you to control where you can and can't draw within your piece. They also allow you to hide or conceal parts of your image without erasing. Let's add some texture and detail to this leaf. Turn off visibility of layer 2 with the pink flower. Tap on layer 1 to select it. Select the dark green from your palette. Let's choose a different brush. Find the industrial set and choose the concrete block brush. Now, if you were to try painting in some texture to this leaf shape, you'd have a pretty hard time getting it perfectly inside. Let's two finger tap to undo that. Open the layers panel, 
Tap the layer, then tap Alpha Lock from the menu. You'll know Alpha Lock is enabled because a checkerboard pattern will appear in the layer preview. With Alpha Lock turned on, I cannot make any new marks on this layer except where I've already drawn. This feature makes it super easy to add the texture to just the leaf shape. Now we'll use a clipping mask to add some veins to that leaf on a new layer. Open the layers panel and tap the plus sign to create a new layer. New layers are always created directly above the layer you had selected. Go back and select the syrup brush from the inking set again. Then draw some veins. It's perfectly fine that these lines are extending over the edge of the shape. Open the layers panel, tap layer three to open the options menu, then tap clipping mask. Clipping masks are a lot like alpha lock where I can't draw outside the shape, but the clipping mask allows you to do this on a separate layer. This means I can manipulate these vein details independently of the leaf. For example, I can use a blend mode on this layer to control how the veins interact with the leaf. Tap N on that layer and slide through the different options. Multiply will have a darkening effect. Scroll down until you get to screen. This blend mode will have a lightening effect and I think that looks pretty good. Let's merge the two leaf elements together. You can merge layers by pinching them together. Merging layers is useful if you start running out of layers. There is a maximum number of layers you can use in any given artwork. The maximum layer count is dictated by two things. One, how much RAM is in your iPad. More RAM equals more layers. Two, the resolution of your canvas. A lower resolution also equals more layers. Turn on the pink flower layer so we can add some details using alpha lock. Another way to turn on alpha lock is by taking two fingers and swiping to the right on the layer. I use alpha lock a lot, so this is a really handy gesture. Select the bright pink from your color palette. Draw a dot in the middle and then some lines going outward. There is one more type of mask and that is the layer mask. I have a tutorial all about masks if you wanna learn more. Now let's learn about the selection tool. We're going to make a selection around this yellow flower. In the layers menu, hide the pink flower layer and then select layer one. The selection tool is this S shaped icon over on the left. Tap it and you'll see a bar appear at the bottom. I use the free hand option most. With it, you can tap, tap, tap to make a selection or draw it by hand. Close the selection by tapping this gray dot. Right now, the flower is on the same layer as the leaf, but I want it to be on its own layer. To do this, we'll use the copy paste menu. With the flower selected, swipe down with three fingers on the canvas. This will invoke the copy paste menu. There are several options such as cut, copy, duplicate, but we're going to use the cut and paste option. Go back to the layers menu and now you'll see the yellow flower has been cut from layer two and pasted into a new layer. You should note that anytime you paste something, it will always be placed onto its own layer. Let's turn back on the pink flower layer and create another new layer. We're gonna use the selection tool to draw another flower shape using color fill. Tap the selection icon, tap color fill in the bottom bar. Draw a U shape, then tap, tap, tap to make a tulip. Because color fill is enabled, that selection will automatically fill with whatever color you've got selected in the color picker. You can even change the color on the fly. Let's choose a nice orange for this flower. Tap the selection icon again to deselect. There are several ways to make selections. First, let's disable color fill by tapping it. You can also make rectangular or elliptical selections. Make an elliptical selection near the bottom of this orange flower. There's an option to feather or soften edges of your selection. Feather to about 25%. Open the layers menu and make another new layer. In the color picker, we're going to pick like a red orange. Go back to layers, tap the layer, and then choose fill layer. You can use the fill layer feature to fill an entire layer with color or just a selection like I have here. Tap this layer again and then choose clipping mask. Now this flower has a nice gradient effect. Let's merge those together. Tap the top layer and choose merge down to merge those two layers together. 
Now the thing I use the selection tool the most for is selecting parts of my artwork to move around using the transform tool. Let's learn about that next. The transform tool lets you move and manipulate parts of your artwork around the canvas. It's this little arrow icon. Tap it and by default, it will select the entire contents of the selected layer. This bounding box will appear around the selection. Start by choosing freeform in the bar that appears at the bottom of the screen. You can move the selection around with your pencil or your finger. You can also resize and stretch it by pulling on one of these blue nodes. To resize uniformly, pinch inside of the bounding box or tap over to the uniform transform mode. This mode will preserve the proportions of your image. Take a look at the bounding box and you'll see two different handles. The green one lets you rotate the selection and the yellow one lets you rotate the bounding box itself. Tap snapping, then turn on magnetics, which will give you guidelines that help you move in a straight line horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. If you were to turn on snapping, your content will snap to align to things like the center point of your canvas or other objects. There are also options to flip and rotate. Distort lets you shear your selection, creating tilt and perspective effects. And the warp transform tool uses a mesh grid to manipulate. Drag anywhere on this mesh to pull, wrap, or fold. Tap this reset button to undo all the transformations. Let's tap back over to uniform mode. Let's use the selection and transform tools to arrange these flowers. Because each flower is on its own layer, all you have to do is select the layer, then choose the transform tool and move them where you want them to be. I think this piece would look good with another leaf. Go to the layers menu and swipe to the left on the leaf layer. Here you'll see an option to duplicate the layer. With that new layer selected, use the transform tool to move it, resize it, flip it, and rotate it. You can move multiple layers at once. Swipe right on each layer to select multiple layers at a time. Then we can move all of the layers to center them on the canvas. Let's add some stems to our flowers. Create a new layer for the stems. I want the stems to be behind the flowers, so this layer needs to be under the flower layers. Tap, hold, and drag the layer down. Let's say I want my stems to be perfectly straight. There's a tool for that and it's called Quickline. Select the lighter green color and make the brush size a little larger. Draw a line, but don't lift your pencil off the screen. The line will become perfectly straight and you can move it around like this. If you take another finger and place it on the canvas, that line will snap to 15 degree increments. This is very handy for making perfectly vertical or horizontal lines. Place this line here and draw two more lines for the other flowers. I'll also move my leaves a bit to match them up with the stems. This feature also works for shapes. Select the yellow flower layer and choose the darker yellow from your palette. Draw a circle in the center of the flower, but don't lift your pencil off the screen. This is quick shape in action. Place another finger on the canvas and this will give you a perfect circle. Tap edit shape at the top and you can manipulate this circle. Move it around, distort it, or resize it by dragging the outline of the circle. Tap on the canvas to commit the shape. You can also use quick shape to draw rectangles or squares, triangles, arcs, and polygons. Let's color in this circle too. If we try to use color drop, you can see that it's coloring the whole flower and not just what's in the circle. We need to adjust the color drop threshold. This controls how much color spills over into similarly colored areas of the same shape. Two finger tap to undo. Color drop again, but don't lift up your pencil. A blue bar will appear at the top. Slide your pencil to the left until the color just fills the circle. Side note, you can also change the color drop threshold when color is not filling in a shape all the way like this. This magic wand icon is home to the adjustments menu. 
You can use the features found here to make overall or fine tune adjustments and create fun effects with filters. Tap Hue Saturation Brightness. You'll see options for Layer and Pencil. Layer means the adjustment will be made to the entire layer or selection. Tap Layer. I use the Hue Saturation Brightness adjustment often to fine tune colors. You can change the hue, saturation, or brightness. Tap one finger anywhere on the screen to invoke the adjustments actions. Use these buttons to preview, undo, reset, and more. Tap cancel to exit without making any changes. Let's try a blur filter, Gaussian blur. Tap it and this time tap pencil. Pencil allows you to paint in where you want the adjustment or filter to be applied. Use a finger to increase or decrease the amount of blur. Tap with a the finger, then tap Cancel. Down here, you'll find the Liquify tool. I use this tool a lot when I want to seamlessly edit the shape of something. The one I use most often is Push, but go through and see what each one does. You can twirl, pinch, expand, crystallize, and much more. Reconstruct will let you paint it back to its original shape, or you can tap Reset. There are a lot of different filters in this menu, so I would suggest taking some time to play around with them and see what each one does. This wrench icon is the Actions menu. Under the Add tab, you can import a photo to your canvas. This is a leaf photo that I got from a free stock photography site. I'll put a link to the photo in the description if you wanna download it yourself. I'm using the Automatic Selection tool to select the white area of this photo. Automatic will select similarly colored areas of your artwork. Slide back and forth to adjust the threshold. Now go to the Layers menu and tap Clear. Now I can reposition this and I have a pretty cool mixed media piece. There's also an option here to add text. You can add typography to your art. You can even import custom fonts. Before we continue, I'm going to make a duplicate of this file. Let's exit back to the gallery view. Swipe to the left on the file and choose Duplicate. Now open the duplicate file. The next panel of the Actions menu is called Canvas. Use Crop and Resize to adjust the size and boundaries of your canvas. Move the edges of the frame or tap settings to manually adjust the resolution of your canvas. Resample Canvas will allow you to edit the canvas's resolution as a whole. Let's change the width to 1920, which is the perfect size for the next thing we're going to do, animation. Tap Done. Making animations in Procreate is super fun and the possibilities are endless. In the Actions menu, toggle on Animation Assist. A timeline will appear at the bottom. Animation in Procreate works by making each layer or layer group of your artwork into a frame of animation. Let's see how it works. Tap Play to see it cycle through all the layers. Obviously, this piece is not set up for animation. But if we group all these layers together, Procreate will read it as a single frame. Go into the Layers panel and select all the layers, then tap Group. Now you can see the complete artwork as a frame in the timeline. Tap the frame and tap Duplicate. Back in the Layers panel, this layer group has been duplicated. Close the bottom group by tapping this caret symbol. In the top group, select the leaves and rotate them a little using the Transform tool. You'll see a lightened version of the previous frame of animation, which makes a helpful guide when you're moving things around. Now that you've moved the three leaves, tap play. A bit crazy, huh? <laughs> tap settings and lower the frames per second. That's a bit better. This is a pretty simple animation, but there's so much you can do using this feature. If you wanna learn more about animation and Procreate, including how to export your animations, check out my Procreate animation class and my animated GIF tutorial. Let's go back to the gallery view and open that previous version of our flower artwork. But before we do, let's name these files. On the original file, 
Use your finger to tap untitled artwork. Let's call it flowers. And we'll name the other one flower animation. If I tap the name with my pencil, I can write in the title like this. This is a feature you'll find in iOS 14 or later. Let's also rename our brush stroke study. Go ahead and open the flowers file. Another option you'll find in the canvas panel of the actions menu is drawing guide. I've got two tutorials that teach you how to use the different drawing guide options. Learn how to draw in perspective using the perspective drawing guide. Another option is symmetry, which reflects what you draw in really cool ways. I use symmetry to teach you how to draw this folk art style piece. Down here is canvas information, which as you might've guessed, gives you information about your file. Statistics is kind of cool because you can see how long you've been working on a piece. Back in the actions menu, let's skip over to the video tab. One of my favorite things about Procreate is the ability to play back everything you've done in a time-lapse replay. It's really satisfying to watch the whole process. You can even export your time-lapse video to share. Speaking of sharing, tap over to the share tab. Finally, we're gonna look at how you can share your lovely creations. There are a variety of formats for you to share your artwork in. Let's look at these formats. When you export, you can either preserve all of your layers or you can flatten your piece into a single layer. JPEG, PNG, and TIFF will flatten your artwork. JPEG is a very common file type that is supported nearly everywhere. This file type applies compression, which means you'll lose some quality in exchange for a smaller file size. PNG does not use compression, so it will be full quality, but it'll be a bit larger in file size. PNG also supports transparent backgrounds. TIFF is the highest quality option, but also the largest file size. It's a format often used when printing professionally, but always check with your printing vendor to see what file format they accept or prefer. The .procreate and PSD options will preserve your layers, blend modes, and adjustments. Use the .procreate file format when backing up or transferring to another iPad running Procreate. And then you can use the PSD to convert your artwork to a file that works in Adobe Photoshop. Let's choose to export this piece as a PNG, which is a good combination of image quality and a smallish file size. From here, you can save the file to your device or you can share it in a number of ways. Let's tap back out to the gallery and I'll show you a few ways you can organize your files. You already saw how you can swipe to the left to duplicate a file, but there are also options to share and delete. You can reorder files by tapping and holding them and then moving them around. Use two fingers and twist to change the orientation of a file. A two finger spreading gesture lets you quickly preview your art. Pinch to close. Finally, you can organize your files by grouping them into stacks, which are kind of like folders. Tap select at the top, then select the files you want to group and tap stack. You can rename your stacks as well. Let's call this one learning procreate. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this tutorial useful and you're excited about making art on your iPad. If you're ready to learn more, I've got a ton of other tutorials about drawing and using Procreate on my website. And if you wanna learn more about drawing, illustration, and of course, working in Procreate, be sure to subscribe. And if you really wanna level up your drawing skills, think about joining in the Making Art Every Day Challenge. It's a series of drawing prompts, tutorials, motivation, all with the goal of helping you overcome your creative fears and establish a daily art making practice. We're about to start our third year of making art every day and it's really exciting. You can learn more about it at bardobrush.com slash join M-A-E. Again, I'm Lisa Bardo and I teach people how to find their creativity through drawing on the iPad. I'm the owner of Bardo Brush, one of the leading brush creators for Procreate. If you would like to support my work, I hope that you'll check out my premium Procreate brushes that inspire creativity at bardobrush.com. If you're posting artwork to Instagram made with my tutorials or brushes, I would love to see it. Use the hashtag bardobrush. Thanks and happy art making. 
If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future tutorial. And check out one of my other videos. Have a great day. Cut. Done.